Father, we want to say we appreciate your wonderful presence, Lord. We know that you are here in the form of the Holy Ghost and the pillar of fire. Picture caught by camera, Lord, authenticated as supernatural being, a supernatural visitation. We don't feel the full impact, Lord, but we know that your word is true and your word will be fulfilled and you're here to fulfill it. We're very grateful for that. Now we pray, Father, that you'll help us in the study of Brother Branham's message. We know that he was your prophet <clears throat> and we know that many things are difficult to understand because we cannot stand in his shoes, Lord, or know by his spirit, but we can know with your help, Lord, what he was saying to us, and we know it's very, very necessary to know what he was saying, even in this message, Father, which in many places is difficult. So help us today to get what we have need of, and we know, Lord, what we particularly might not have need of, Lord, at this moment, but perhaps down the road, you can show us that at that time, but we just cast ourselves upon your mercy, Lord, to show us the truth of what has been said. Help us, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> now, also, I, I think we have with us, and a brother, you're from um, Michigan, aren't you? You phoned me the other day, you're from Michigan, right. There's a brother I met in, in Jeffersonville. He met me, I guess we met each other. I can't remember him, but he looks a little bit like Mark Keller, so uh, he and his wife and children are there, so don't forget to greet them after service. We're very glad to have them with us. They're believers in the message. I don't think you have a place to worship right at this time, do you? Have you got a church to go to? No. Well, just keep on holding on. That's the main thing, brother. The Lord will provide for you as time goes along. <clears throat> now, we're into number seven of who is this Melchizedek, and I'm going to go into my notes here to sort of catch us up as I usually do. Now, this message that we're studying is based upon the question, who is this Melchizedek? And we know that Brother Branham categorically states that it is actually God in the form of a man. Now, that's the answer to the question. It is God. He is God in a form. And, of course, it was a king. Now, surprisingly, he does not deal at any length proving this thesis. He simply takes uh, the scripture that he read in uh, Hebrews 7, 1 to 3, where he mentions that this one had neither beginning of days nor endless life, but he had an endless life. And he said there's only one could qualify for that, and that was God. It wasn't Jesus Christ even, it was God. But we know, of course, he says that Melchizedek became Jesus. In other words, we find where God was embodying himself he now embodies himself in the Lord Jesus Christ. You have actually a perfect picture here in the sense of God coming in and indwelling his temple, the Lord coming to his temple like in the River Jordan. Now, however, in showing us <clears throat> that this is God manifested by an incarnation of sorts, because the word carnus means flesh, and this wasn't true flesh as far as human flesh was concerned. It was a form. So it was. he showed us that God... Uh, manifested himself, incarnated himself, and in that he informs us that this particular event is a major step that God has taken whereby he finally becomes a part of his own creation in the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, which then is truly God manifested in flesh, which is human flesh. And of course this is uh, uh, taken from uh, his thought in uh, Revelation 3.14, where the scripture tells us one of the definitions or uh, descriptions of Jesus is the beginning of the creation of God. And Brother Branagh said, God creating himself in the form of human flesh. And so uh, when you're looking at that, <clears throat> you're looking at an ultimate, <clears throat> an ultimate that God wanted in the plan of redemption. Now, we fully understand how Jesus was born. There's nobody here, I'm sure, that misunderstands that. Brother Brandon said that what God did, he created a sperm and an egg, and then he reduced all these attributes into that particular form so that Jesus was the uh, fullness of the Godhead manifested bodily. Now, the term manifested bodily uh, cannot be relegated uh, to uh, I mean, just to put outside of our thoughts. It can't be put aside. You could, you could have many thoughts upon that, which we won't go into this morning, but <clears throat> many people hold the idea that if they're the attributes bodily, they wouldn't necessarily be all the attributes of God. 
And uh, I can agree with that to the extent that God was preparing a body. And so therefore the attributes having been compressed might have been uh, ne of necessity uh, just, you know, looking toward the body. But when God came in, everything was there. There was, in my understanding, uh, I, I see nothing left to the outside. I see it all in God was in Christ. That's my understanding. Now, I haven't shown us this. Brother Branham then states that all God's sons come this way, the way Melchizedek, God came through Melchizedek and on down through Christ, that all of God's sons come this particular way. And we know that this is very true because it's verified in the book of Hebrews, the second chapter, which, you know, we use a great deal. And uh, we read from 9 to 16, and of course we particularly read, remember, 11 to 13 out of those verses. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering and death, crowned with glory and honor, that he by the grace of God should taste death for every man. Now, of course, the word man is not in the Greek, and it should be in italics, it's every, and it's for every son. And for it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons into, unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Now, <clears throat> it says, by the grace of God, he tasted death for every son. Now, it said it became him. Now, who is the him? The him is God. It became God. Now, Brother Branham said, it could not be becoming to God. It was not becoming to God to have a son who would fall. So therefore, Eve was left out of the original creation in the sense that she was not a part of that at that moment, but she was in the original creation in Adam. You can't, you can't get away from that because she was. <clears throat> but you see later on, because she never appeared at the time Adam appeared in flesh, she wasn't in that creation. And so Br Brother Branham brought us that, but you couldn't find God doing anything in, 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 in the vulgar or anything which would be second rate. There's no way there's a second rate program going on. It's all first class. So it became God from whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory. And remember, Jesus was a son. See, to make the captain, that's Jesus, of their salvation perfect through sufferings. And notice it's in the plural, not just suffering, but sufferings. In other words, he went through all temptations and testings. For both he that sacrifice, sanctified and they who are sanctified are all of one. So notice both he that sanctified, <clears throat> that's God, and he that, I mean Jesus, and those that are sanctified are all of one. For which cause Jesus is not ashamed to call them my brethren saying, I will declare thy name, O God, unto my brethren in the midst of the church, in the midst of the bride, the church of God, will I sing praise unto thee, O God. And again, I, Jesus, will put my trust in God, and behold, again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. Now, there you are. The children are given to God. They're God's children, rather given to Jesus, but they're given to him. <clears throat> and you understand why? Because he paid a price for them. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part. And now he never took it all. He wasn't, he, he never had any serpent flesh in him. Amen. He's, a, he's a different breed. So you can never can, can get confused there. He took a part of the same. And he took part in the same. He came by a physical birth. He could have come like Adam came, but he didn't. He came by physical birth to be the seed of the woman. <clears throat> that through death, his death, the death of Jesus, he might bring to nothing Satan that has the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took, not himself, uh, took on himself to be uh, angels, be the line of angels. Now he was Michael at one time, and Michael's still living. You got a lot of peculiar things Brother Branham brought out, and I'm not going to try to explain them as though I got all the answers. I'll talk about it and remind you they're there, but I don't have all the answers, though I can put it all together, but we're just waiting to see what God will do. Now, he didn't become an angel, but he became a seed of Abraham. Abraham was a man, a very fallible person. <clears throat> wonderful, wonderful man, but very fallible. He, even, he, like Adam, he listened to his wife, and he shouldn't have done that. And we he listened to his wife, that's all the problem right now in Israel. Right now, all the goings on in the Middle East is because Abraham was, he played the fool. Yeah, you know, he got involved with a woman he shouldn't have been involved with. That's the story, isn't it? <clears throat> well, don't blame the women. 
She wasn't hanging around. He was, you know what I mean? She was there. Okay, he took on himself a seed of Abraham, became a human being, and by this time there was no perfect people left in the world. So he had to be the one perfect man, Jesus had to be the one perfect person with the perfect blood to come and redeem all these people. Noah was the last genetically perfect person. You know that, don't you? Yeah. Wherefore, in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren. Now in all things he was made like, although he wasn't one of them to perfection, that he might be a merciful and high priest in things pertaining to God. So he was a priest of the people unto God when he took on this body we're talking about so he could die to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. Now back in Melchizedek's day, he was a priest of God unto the people. That's the reverse. He gave communion, uh, bread and wine to the Abraham and he was a priest of the Most High God but you notice he was serving the man. He reverses in flesh. He becomes a priest of man. He takes upon himself, even though of the order of Melchizedek, he must present blood to God as Aaron did. So now he's a priest of man unto God. And we'll see where that comes up more and more in what we're talking about here. But you've got to bring all these things to your mind and stay with them. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to help them that are tempted. <clears throat> so when Brother Branham is telling us that we look in his studies of who is this Melchizedek, how that God began forming himself in flesh, he says it is the way also that we come to a degree now, he's not saying we're identical. That's true. <clears throat> but he's saying there is a pattern. And this pattern is what we'll be looking at as we did the other night. Now, so Brother Branham began to trace the descent of God into flesh. Why it was done and the results. And, of course, we know how it was done, as he tells us. We know why it was done, and we know the results. Like today, the blood of Jesus Christ scatters sin, to there be no evidence. Then how can you possibly call a person sinner, and how can you not be perfect in the sight of God through the blood? Because how, if you are perfect, there has to be a way to make perfection. Brother Brandon said, be perfect, your father, which is perfect, which is perfect. And he said, God had to make a way. <clears throat> and he said he did it by the blood. And then he said, the blood scatters sin, to there be no evidence. And if there be no evidence, then how can you call a person a sinner? Then he showed us our descent, which we studied the other night, and wherein it differed from Jesus the Christ and why it was and what the end results are. And we know the end results are going to be New Jerusalem. Okay, so <clears throat> let's go and look at some things here that we looked at last Wednesday and to, to finally get back in the message, which we're taking our time with because I think later on we can read rapidly and just zoom through it. I hope. I don't know. I almost, some, most of the time I get grounded on my zooming. I think, hey, praise the Lord, maybe 10 pages tomorrow night or 15 pages, and I'm bogged down with two paragraphs because something interesting comes up. And so, we, you know, I just got to warn you, don't, don't get happy that this is going to be over in six, three more messages. We're at the number seven now. You know, just kind of simmer down and be patient and we'll feed you. That's your reward. <laughs> I don't know if it is or not. But <clears throat> all right, you know what I'm saying. Okay, so to begin with, Brother Branham had in mind certain scriptures uh, when he's dealing with this parallelism of us coming down from him and then ending where he wants us to be. And it's got to come in a measure in the same way that Jesus, because we are brethren and from the same source. So you've got to expect something that uh, is identical, though the personages themselves will not be identical. Now, actually, you're, you, you look at it, I want to clarify that remark, <clears throat> uh, looking at Jesus, looking at us, it's the same old story of the baptism with the Holy Ghost. The baptism with the Holy Ghost is like a thimble full of ocean water compared to the ocean. Now, we are looking at the same thing because you can't deny we are from the same source with the same Father. If that's the Bible, that's the Bible. Amen. Now, it hasn't got a thing to do with our feelings because our feelings make us to know we're crummy. But the Word of God makes us to know we're sons of God if you got the Holy Ghost. 
Now, if you haven't got the Holy Ghost, you can look at that and say, well, that, oh, that's lovely. Well, didn't the Lord really want something nice for us? And look how we blew it. In other words, look, God, let me tell you something. You're a nice fella, but look what you're dealing with. No way, Lord, could it be what you say. Just leave us alone and maybe by grace do something nice, but please don't tell us we're sons as though we came from you. How would you like to go and tell your father that? He'd slap your chops right around, wouldn't he? At least your mother would. So you trying to tell me that I had an illegitimate affair? Huh? Better think. You know, words are expensive, brother, sister. All right, let's look at some scripture here. First of all, we go to John 14, and <clears throat> we see what Jesus said about him and his relationship to God. We could use others, but Brother Branham liked this, and I like it, and if he liked it, then we're bound to like it. John 14, 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? Now, that's great. Look at that. And the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Okay, that's good. You like that one? All right, what about Hebrews, the first chapter? Take a couple of verses there, one and two. God, who in many parts and many ways or different times and different manners spake in time past unto the fathers in the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us in son. He spoke, in other words, he spoke as he spoke in the prophets. He got into a man, his own man, after his own spirit, creating and forming in the womb of Mary, this one now in office of son. <clears throat> in the office of son, he is speaking. That's why the prophets are called son of man. That's why he had, a re he had the son of man ministry returned to earth. 17 chapter Luke, all of those things. Now let's go to Ephesians 1, and we'll take a look at us. And that's a nice thing to look at. And it says here in, in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places and in Christ, according as he has chosen us within him, or in him, before the foundation of the world. <clears throat> there you are. You have a perfect picture of those scriptures coming together. And then he brought out Colossians, uh, the second chapter, and maybe we'll look at verse 9, two, nine and a couple of verses. <clears throat> It says, For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also you were circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in the putting off of the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Jesus. Now, what was that? That wasn't his circumcision eight days old. That was his death when he's cut off. You died with him rose with him, buried with him in baptism, wherein also you are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. It tells you right there, if you are willing enough and just humble enough and childlike enough and in the eyes of the world stupid enough, you're right there. That's a pretty high status that God gives those that are willing to believe. And nobody's going to believe except the elect. You might as well know that. See, nobody's going to believe but that. See? Now, <clears throat> his own expression for this was that Jesus was the fullness of the attributes of, God, of, of, of the Godhead bodily. He used the term attributes, and you will notice that he also used the term attributes concerning us. And we'll look at that later on again. Now, furthermore, then in his comparison of Christ to us, he made us individual attributes of God. So <clears throat> we might sort of, if you can see up here, I guess I better not try to put this, or maybe I better. You don't see too well over there, do you? How are we going to make this work for you people? And you know, not that my artistry is so great, but just maybe, no, she got the camera there. By a little luck, you know, we might do something. What about, what about if we turn this on in? If I can turn this on in, let's see what we come up with. Then what I'm thinking of, I can raise my arms up in the air. This is going to be kind of confusing to those people that get nothing but they're just tapes, <coughs> not the visual. Okay, see, now if we can sort of, maybe I say to here, to, when you concern <coughs> God himself, we're looking at the comparison where Brother Branham said, that Christ was the fullness of the attributes 
bodily. And then, mind you, he said that we were attributes. So we put up here, and we understand then that God was in Christ. That's the Messiah. We understand that he came down into bodily form. But we're looking back here in the beginning. So therefore, we have <clears throat> all these sons in here up here, you see. And they're attributes. Now, you know what I read over here in Colossians. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in him, which is the head of all principalities and power, in whom also you were, are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, in the putting off of the body of sins of the flesh, by the circumcision that Jesus Christ buried him in baptism, were also risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins and circumcision of your sins, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all your trespasses. So <clears throat> you can see that you were actually were in Christ. And as Brother Branna said, when he died, I died. When he rose, I rose. And there's a perfect identification in there that is very, very hard to understand, but you simply got to take it by faith, and you can't figure it out. Because what you're going to try to figure out, how could I be up there, then and then, and then in here? Now, God has a natural means of doing it. Now, remember, the Bible calls Jesus elect, right? Amen. Peter, there's the word elect is in there. So let's not, if you guess, I got a bigger concordance back there. You don't got, I got a lousy memory. But I know, what I, listen, I know what it says. I maybe don't know the verse in the chapter, but I know what it says. And Jesus is called elect. Now, when you are dealing with election, <clears throat> you are dealing with a choosing. And Brother Branham said there is a natural election and there is a spiritual election. Is that right? Exactly what he said. All right, so therefore you have a spiritual election in here. <clears throat> now, down here you've got to have somewhere a natural election. So you're going to call this SE, spiritual election, and you're going to call this N-E, if I remember what it is, you tell me if I forget. <clears throat> a natural election. Now, the natural election is where God makes choice amongst people as he did with Esau and Jacob. But already it was a spiritual election because before they were born, I loved one and I hated another. Amen. You follow? <clears throat> okay, so what he's telling you here, the fullness of the Godhead bodily, Everything that God was was poured into Jesus Christ. So every single thing up there had a manifestation in one single man, just like there is one single God. But all of these little individuals here, see, they have a right to come down. And they're called attributes. They're called sons of the Spirit. They're called sons of God. They're called sons of faith. They're called sons of Abraham. Five at least. And every one of those is the same. And also, you got another appellation, which is called seed. Amen. See? And there's only one part of you that was of God. And you've got three parts. One part was flesh, and you get a spirit allowed of God, but not of God, which shows it's not the Holy Ghost. So when you come down here, you come down as a seed, which is soul. And the, and the home that the soul should have had, or the seed should have had, or the son should have had, sons of God, sons of spirit, call it whatever you want, should have been a theophonic form. But it was not. There's only one got the theophonic form, and that was the fullness of the Godhead body. And that's a TF. That's a theophonic, uh, yeah, theophonic, theophonic form, TH. Put a small H there. <clears throat> theophonic form. Now, so, let's go to the book of Galatians, and we're going to look at the third chapter, and we're going to start with verse 26. For you are all the children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. Now that lets you know how that you know you're a child of God. But you cannot be a child of God simply by faith because every single person that's in Christendom wants to believe he's a child of God through a process of faith. You have got to go beyond that. Your faith does not literally bring anything to pass. Your faith acknowledges. Right. Our faith acknowledges, brother, sister. <clears throat> not the great moving force people think it is. It's a, although I agree, faith is a tremendous power. I, I agree looking from the human side, but when you look from this side here, it is an acknowledgement. By his stripes I'm healed. If you and I can acknowledge that with understanding, it's making the same confession Jesus Christ made, we are healed. Amen. 
See, that's what you're looking at. So let's keep looking. For as many as you have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. <clears throat> In other words, you're baptized into the mystical body of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is where there's neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female, for all are one in Christ Jesus. Now that's not women preachers. But if you be Christ, then you're Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. Now he tells you who a real son of God is, a real son of Abraham. You've got, to be, you've got to be baptized into it. Now when you're baptized into Christ, remember one thing, you are quickened. <clears throat> now what are you quickened to? You say, all right, we were dead in sin. What does the word dead mean? It means separated. And that's exactly right. When all of this came down in here, when, when, we came, when these were coming down in here, <clears throat> there's a separation. <clears throat> and remember, Jesus the man was also separated from God because he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? There's a separation. Now, there's a natural separation to get down into here. <clears throat> and that came by Adam because in Adam were the souls. There is a natural election. And when God chose, they were already in Adam. The ones were in Christ. Now that's why the prophet says sex had to come. But you know as well as I do, it came the wrong way. There's, there, I'm not going to denigrate sex at all and childbirth the way it came. Brother Branham brought it out very, very clearly, but he cleared the atmosphere by saying they would have come to it anyway. They positively would have had to come to it. But she wouldn't have come, she wouldn't let that beast get to her first. <clears throat> it wouldn't have been multiplied childbearing. It wouldn't have been all the suffering and the pain. It wouldn't have been all this mixed breed and everything else homosexuality, all this junk, it wouldn't have been there at all. Even the sin that we did went back upon the animals because an animal got in the act. As he brought the human race down with Adam, the beast brought all nature down. See, the whole thing went into corruption. There's nothing wrong with what, what, what God laid out here, what man went to do. It was a separation. That's right, you separate any one word of God, you shot the whole works. <clears throat> See, we've got to get back to the integrity of God, which means an integration, which means a truth. Now, these sons left, just like he had to leave. <clears throat> now, you, when you're talking about Jesus, we're going to get into some, some things here that are rough to get into, but we'll, we'll try to deal with them. Now, let me go to the fourth chapter. Now, I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differs nothing from a servant, though he's Lord of all. Amen. You just believe it but as under tutors and governors till the time appointed to the Father. Amen. Seven solid church ages we've been through now since the time of Jesus. But even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage, were under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, now watch what God did at a specific period, and you're going to see something bigger at another period. God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Now this wasn't made of a man. <clears throat> God sent forth his son, made of a woman. The creation was of God, but the making was of the woman. She was a chemical factory. And his body came out of the ground the same as your body and my body came out of the ground. Say what you want. That's the word of God. To redeem them under the law. Now the word redeem actually means to ransom. <clears throat> to bring back the kidnapped. Too many, too many times look at the word redeem and you, and you go off on a, in a tizzy and a tangent. It means to buy back. It literally means to ransom. The word buy back is okay like redeem. It's, it's good enough. It's, I mean, it's good, but it's not good enough. It actually means to me it, the victim was kidnapped. <clears throat> I'll give an illustration later on if we ever get to it. Well, someday, maybe today or tomorrow. Who knows? All right. It says here, to redeem them, to buy back, to, to, to um, <clears throat> ransom those who are under the law. But they didn't want to get under the law. Somebody stuck them under the law. They didn't belong under there. They weren't part of it. But they got kidnapped. And they were stuck there. That we might receive the placing of sons. <clears throat> In other words, you have... Jesus coming by way of a woman in order to get us away from our kidnapper and identify us with our owner. See, the 
All right, let's talk about it. <clears throat> Here's a woman, she's, she's kidnapped. She's a wife and a mother. And, and some filthy individual kidnaps her. And he says, sends a letter and he said, now I've got your wife and uh, I'm going to tell you what. I want, I want $10 million for her. <clears throat> the guy's rich, so he says, all right. She's worth everything I got, so I'm going to give you the $10 million. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. Was the wife kidnapped and in the possession of a kidnapper any less the wife when she was in the arms of her husband? The answer is no. She's the same person under different conditions. And what about us, the children of God? Amen. Hey, man, that should make a, any a stone wall begin to climb. Amen. If we really believe it. So now the kidnapper has been paid a ransom. This way, we can be identified now and back in the arms of God. Now it says, and because you're sons, because you are sons, and known to be sons, identified in him, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, Abba, Father, our Father, wherefore thou art no more a servant, <clears throat> but a son. He always was a son. But he was laboring under the bondage of the kidnapper, <clears throat> the Pharaoh, that took the children of God <clears throat> and made them slaves. And Moses came down, he said, Pharaoh, let my people go. And Jesus came down, he said, let my people go, Satan. He said, I'll let your people go like nothing. So as Israel was tortured in a, in a, in a, little, a little frame of, you might call, <clears throat> uh, <clears throat> an example, an illustration, or a type, Christ was pitifully tortured and crucified to let the people go. And even went down into hell in a theophonic form and preached to the souls in prison and shook the doors from off of hell. A kind of type, the only type I can see in, <clears throat> in Samson. Every Pentecostal preacher, he always screamed about taking the gates off the city and climbing up a, a mountain. He said, oh, you bunch of birds, you make me sick. Who wants to rip a gate off? Jesus ripped the gates off. You and I don't rip any gates off. We walk through the gates that are ripped off. And if we think we're going to go out ripping off the gates, we're just right back at the old Pentecostal hooliganism. Who needs it? You don't need it. You want something different. You want God to rip the gates off. As Brother Branham said, he said, you just, he said, my vindication is so perfect. If God said tomorrow, you go to the graveyard and raise Abraham Lincoln, I'd call the arms and would have shoot me down if I couldn't do it. William Branham didn't rip any gates off any city and climb a hill. William Branham didn't rip any gates off. He stood aside and let God rip the gates off. Amen. That's our caught in picking trouble, brother, if you want to know the truth. Pardon my vernacular, but it's the truth. That's our trouble. We're... But hallelujah, we're still sons of God. We've got a lot to learn, haven't we? Millennium is a place we're going to learn a lot of this. You, know, you don't go there and just fold your hands and go, hey, nice time to sleep. I'm, I'm a sleepy type of person. You won't sleep without... <laughs> you, you, you go to bed at nights, I suppose, because but when it comes to the new Jerusalem, you ain't going to sleep at all. You're going to be too busy having too great a time. Who wants to sleep and let, the, you know, let, anything, let, let anything go by you? You know what little kids are? Poor kids, they rub their eyes, they hold them open because they don't want to miss a trick, you know? That's the way we are. <clears throat> All right. Now it says, it says here then, those, you were a son <clears throat> all the time, and you were an heir all the time, but you're under this tribulation and now you're free. Now, next we notice that Brother Branham used John, 1 John 1 to 3. Now we're following down, him coming down, and us coming down. <clears throat> and you got to admit it's true. In the beginning was the Word, the Word is with God, and the Word was God, the same thing was in the beginning with God. All things made by him, without him, without him was not anything made that was made, and the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. <clears throat> now it tells you right there, there was a process, and Brother Branham completely told us, if you make Jesus the Word, you make three gods. Jesus is not the Word. God is the Word. God became flesh and dwelt among us. <clears throat> There's a process there of God coming down to be human flesh. And God is still becoming human flesh by the individual attributes that he let come down through the human race. <clears throat> See? He allowed that, that life there. 
Now, we all, now as, as God expressed himself, and finally in Jesus became the expression, now here was Melchizedek up here. Down here, <clears throat> well, we might as well come on down here now, and we'll go to Jesus Christ. Jesus the Christ, we call him. <clears throat> okay, now, um, he, came, he, he came to here and on down. Now, we come over here. Well, they're down here in this area here. <clears throat> Let me see what I got some different pencils and things. We can make some more in here. <clears throat> this here. Now, notice what we do. We don't come that way. <clears throat> now, we just leave that for the time being. We're going to come back to it. Now, now, at this point, we must see that the expression, thoughts of God, in his thoughts, must be understood. Now, thoughts of God and in his thoughts, they must be understood. We're going to talk about And uh, before we get into <clears throat> reading what Brother Branham said here, we're going to make a note again. We're called attributes, sons of Abraham, sons of faith, sons of his spirit, sons of God. All of those appellations up there. I won't write them down. You heard me say them. <clears throat> then he says, God was in Christ and decided by a set process to become flesh. In other words, God was in his outreign so that when you look at the fact of what the scripture says, in the beginning was God. <clears throat> now, he took upon himself a form and the visibility of the form perfectly expressed God so that the form and God were one and the same. So when you look at Melchizedek here, you say, that is Melchizedek, that is true. That is the human appellation and the human or physical application that God was using, but it was God. Amen. <clears throat> and looking forward to coming down here. He that has seen me hath seen the Father. Amen. Now he said, you take that or just forget it. Do you want to be a part of me? He says, you've got to take that. Okay, then right now we might as well put in here. <clears throat> we'll put red this time. And we'll put in through here. Because this is the outward body. We're going to put this all in here. And we're going to put, make this God himself. And we use the, the, he, the uh, Latin. S-E-S-E. -S -E. <clears throat> <clears throat> or per se, whatever you want to use. Okay, God himself. Now, then he's, then, now the, the first step was to take on a form or a word or spirit body, which is a spirit body, and it is a word body. <clears throat> Call it what you want. It's just like the third pole. The third pole is, has different meanings to it. And it's just like opening the seventh seal. Was the seventh seal open? Well, they say it wasn't open because the seventh seal is the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, now listen, don't be confused, because Brother Brandon said there's a coming before he comes. That's the appearing. And Revelation 10, 1 to 7 is the seventh seal. But it's not out of it, because Matthew 24, the silence concerning the literal descent, where we meet him in the air and come back. That's still part of the seventh seal. And the seventh seal goes plumb to eternity, Amen. right to the New Jerusalem. So just don't get, you know, messed up in your thoughts here. <clears throat> okay. Now, the first step was to take on a form or word or spirit body, a theophany. But with us, with us, we bypassed the theophany. <clears throat> okay. Now, we're going to read from page, what page are I on? Page 15. Now I'm on page 16. You better turn, see now. Fifteen's got to be, yes, right. It has to be on one side of 16, I can tell you that, or I'm lost for sure. <clears throat> okay, we're going to start at the top of the page, on page uh, 15, and it's really paragraph 69, but we won't go all the way back. See, you can't be the word unless you're a thought. Now, we're going to talk about thought. <clears throat> so, okay, he says up here, you were a thought. So, let's, these are attributes, and it's the same thing, really thought, sons of God, and everything else in there. It's all one. Here we are up there. <clears throat> we got all these thoughts in there. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> a thought is a product.
product of a thinker. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> thoughts come from a thinker. And you must realize that when Brother Branham equates thoughts to attributes and to sons, he is not using <clears throat> the terminology concerning his thoughts of us which pertain to the human existence. It's the same like it says concerning the wicked, the perverse. They were foreordained for this. In other words, they were previously spoken of it, but they cannot be considered the thoughts of God. So I want you to understand when you read Brother Branham, you must be very careful <clears throat> that you do not confuse God's thinking, his predestinated plans, and get them mixed up with the predestinated ones. There's a big difference. I am a predestinated one. You are a predestinated one. Brother Branham said that he was one, just like Jesus Christ, in the divine election, and God had plans. And the person and the plans would be together. But the plans were in the physical. <clears throat> but the original thoughts are the attributes or the seed. See? Or that which causes to conceive and bring forth the physical, which at the same time is a spiritual being to come on down into here. See? <clears throat> so you be careful about that word thought because Brother Branham uses it not indiscriminately, but, it's, but at times it's a little difficult to follow. Now, the thinker, the omniscient God, had within him all these seeds. Now, brother, now notice, it wasn't something that God made. It was something that already was. For the very reason Brother Branham said, if God let you get lost and sent you to the lake of fire, he'd be destroying a part of himself. <clears throat> So you're looking at a reality here of what sons really are. They're a part and a parcel of the Father. Yes. Yes. Now they've got to come on down to this area here. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> now he says, you can't be the Word unless you are a thought. In other words, you can never come into here and be expressed <clears throat> or into here <clears throat> and be expressed as one of God's expressions or manifestations unless you're up in here. Now, look at, that's right. Look at those flowers there on the, on the organ. You tell me, now look at these things here. You tell me for one minute that we could, that, 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 look, at the pretty, look at the pretty petals here. And look at the petals there. And look at the little cute little flowers here. And over here. Well, now you tell me, where in the world did they come from but out of the seed? Now, they are the expression of the attributes. Physical manifestations. And if God can produce a beautiful flower, and Jesus said, the lily of the field, look how it's clothed. Solomon, all his glory was not clothed like one of these. Then how shall he clothe you? My God, what will look like in the, in the resurrection? Amen. You think flowers are nice? Pretty innocent flowers, the butterflies come, the birds come, the hummingbirds come, and all oh, the beautiful flowers, all oh, the beautiful sons of God in his glory, my brother and my sister. That's what's wrong with us. We got an eye for this for the for the sub-level. It's time we got up to the level of God. Amen. We're supposed to. <clears throat> Now you had to be, you, you can't be word unless you're a thought. In other words, you can never be exp an expressed child of God unless you were in God. You had to be in his thinking first. Now that's opposed to, be, to being his thinking, his actual thoughts. And you had to be in there. Or how would you get down here? You had to be marked, as we'll show you, as he puts it on the book, you had to be in there and then get on a book and then you would have come this way but you weren't allowed to, you come this way. You follow me? So what he told us, that's what he says. I'm not making it up. I, I wouldn't know the first thing about this except I heard Brother Branham say it. You had to be in his thinking first. But you see, in order to stand, 
And that's not a too good a word, to stand temptation. <clears throat> it means to, to be here and tempted. Because you use the word to stand it, it would seem like, well, hey, I can stand that. You get it, you know, you, 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 you don't chicken out, you get through. No, it doesn't mean that. He says here, you had to bypass <clears throat> this theophany, this spirit body, this word form. Then you'd come down here in a different word form. See, a different word form, because you're, you're being expressed. It's because the word's an expression. And when you use the word expression, and when the Greek, you have to understand whatever comes out here has to be a manifestation of what lies in there, or it's no good. Like if you've got a perfect concept of a, of a fork, you say, this is a fork, and somebody shows you a shoebox, you say, oh, no, it ain't. Oh, no, it ain't. Or they show you a, <coughs> a, a spoon, and it's got one tine on the side. And they say, that's a fork. You say, oh, no, it ain't. I'm sorry. And if a fork's got to have four tines in it, then it can't be a fork that's a true fork unless it's got four tines in it. Well, I'm trying to show you the thing itself must have something to indicate that it's a real thing. Yes. The, the, the idea must lie within it. So if you're going to talk about word here, <clears throat> it's got to be an expression of what is up in here. Jesus couldn't just come on this scene and say, here I am, I'm a man, and that's God. <clears throat> he had to have a whole lot more than that going for him, and he did. <clears throat> so, all right. He had to come down here to stand temptation, to be tested. And you had to bypass your theophany. And you had to come down here in flesh to be tempted by sin. See? <clears throat> that's exactly true. You had, to, you had to bypass that being that word body. You couldn't be it. <clears throat> no way. In other words, <clears throat> he said you had to bypass this to be tested. That lets you know that if you'd have been this, or you could have brought it with you, there wouldn't have been any fall. So you had to bypass it. <clears throat> now, it must be terribly important, whatever this is. And in this series, which I don't know, we're going to know about it somehow by the grace of God or let us know down the road because Brother Branham said this is under the seventh seal and we have to know the story of Melchizedek. We've got to know about it because we parallel him. And he said it brings us to the understanding of the true events and the true results. <clears throat> well, you'll see that as I read along. Now, and if you sin, now watch, then if you sin, now he stops right there. In other words, if he said, if you sin by reason of being in the flesh, having bypassed your theophany, what happens? All that the Father's given me, every single one of those seeds, what's going to happen? I'll raise him up at the last day. <clears throat> so, let's say this little fella come on down here, one of the sons of God come on down here. Okay, he, he falls into sin. Well, if you're going to raise him up at the last day, you know the guy's going to die. Now, <clears throat> this soul can't die. It's eternal because of the part of God. <clears throat> that soul can't even really sin when you come right down to it. We'll try to talk about that and see where we go, but come on, how are you going to make God sin? What happens? We're, we're, by the grace of God, we'll try to get some answers. I haven't got all the answers, but I've got to look at the thing the way it is. There's something in here we should know. <clears throat> all right, now look. If he'd have come in here, there wouldn't have been any sin. And if he could have brought it with him, he could have been tempted, and he sure would have been. But as far as I know, nothing would happen. But by and large, just let that one float. Just let it go by. He couldn't bring it with him. No way could he be in it or he never would have been in a place where he could be tested in the flesh and thereby there could be some type of a trouble. And it says even if there is, God will raise it up at the last day. You don't need to worry. There is no son of God going to be lost. Not one of those will be lost. God will not lose one part of himself. <clears throat> if we're part of him, that's going to take care of it. All right, now listen. See, you had to be first, and then he doesn't use a word in there. First what? You had to be first a seed. And then you had to be first in recognition of positioning, you coming down, 
Having missed this, you can't remember a thing up there. Can't remember a thing. <clears throat> now then he says here, you first had to become flesh. You had to become flesh. Then you see, he came right down the regular line from attribute to attribute. Now he doesn't say he had to become flesh. It says you had to become flesh. Now he's drawing a parallel. And then you see, he came right down the regular line from attribute to what? The rest of it. To, to fulfill the plan of God. <clears throat> now, really, what he's saying up here is, now in here is not a, a true interpolation, but the way he comes at us, it isn't that he loses his point of view and the character he's dealing with, <clears throat> it's that as his thoughts slant in concerning the words and thoughts he's using in speech, he doesn't always hold one, two, three, four, five, six. It may be one, two, three, and he stops a while, then comes five, six. You understand what I'm saying? It's not the easiest thing in the world, but let's look at it. <clears throat> now, if you sin, of course we did sin. Now, and we have bodies that allow us to sin, that lead us into sin. Now watch way down at the bottom of paragraph 70, the last line. But look, when this body receives the Spirit of God, the immortal life inside of you, it throws this body into subjection to God. <clears throat> so it doesn't say you come on down here, a son of God, and live like a pig until God raises you up. It says you're subject to sin. But by the gift of the Holy Ghost, you can overcome sin in the flesh. That's, now let's watch, let's go back now. And he tells you the promise is there, I'll raise you up even though you do get into sin. <clears throat> now, he said he comes right down the regular line from attribute to fulfill the whole word of God. Now watch, taking us back. Before the foundation of the world, his names put on the Lamb's book of life. So right up here, there's a whole bunch of seed of God. <clears throat> Let's just make it natural. There's a lot of the life of God he's going to put in vessels. I like that better than going individuals, although they're individual. Now come on. Because he knows where every little bit of his life is going to go and who's going to have it. So now, he's got a great big book up here. And there it is. <clears throat> it's called Lamb's Book of Life. <clears throat> okay. Now, his name shall be called Jesus. That's Jehovah's Savior. For he shall save his people from their sins. Now that's talking of two people in one. God is going to save his people. He's going to do it in the form of the Lord Jesus Christ because that life absolutely in the sperm and egg is the life of God himself. Amen. Absolutely bringing forth that child and bringing forth. Now, <clears throat> it says in here, now see, look at what come here. Now with that then are all the names of the attributes. And if you weren't here, you would never get this. Amen. And Jesus would not have been that and come down here. <clears throat> That's a mystery. We'll try to get to it, whether God helping us. Need, you, know, you and I had to have our names first, and when we did, we, we simply bypassed. Little fellows in here, this didn't bypass, but little fellows in here, they bypassed it, the name here, couldn't go there, came right down here. Now that's what I understand he's saying here. <clears throat> now listen, before the foundation of the world, his name's put on the last book of life, because he was. Then from that he became the word, the theophany, that could appear and disappear. Number three, and then he became flesh. And watch, he died and returned back, resurrected in a glorified condition. But he said, you bypassed the theophany and became flesh man. Now we got a new word, flesh man. Every son of God, every, every son of faith, every son of Abraham, every son of the Spirit, every, every seed, every attribute, every little speck of life is now into the flesh. And we become, and now we're called flesh man. <clears throat> so down here, <clears throat> um, we're, we're called flesh man, flesh man. <clears throat> That's what we are. We're flesh men. He's here. All these. But don't notice, same thing. I don't care if it's in the flesh or put into a brick wall. 
or put in a cloud or a tree. Doesn't bother me any. I'm just using that for illustration. <clears throat> well, I said that's a, that's a that's now a flesh sun. Okay, flesh sun. Wouldn't matter to me. Maybe 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 God likes plastic. Okay, got a plastic sun. I'm trying to show you it's sun. It doesn't change. Like Brother Brown has said, when you leave here, you don't change. Well, glory to God, if we were up here and we're a son of God, a part of God, how are we going to change? Because God doesn't change. I know it sounds queer, but I'm, I'm a queer guy. I just believe what the queer prophet said, that's all. It sounds strange, but doesn't, I'm not going to get bugged over it. <clears throat> Why should I get bugged? God has a principle and a purpose in doing all this, okay? He's got to become a flesh man, become a sin. And then, then if this earthly tabernacle is dissolved, we have one waiting for us. <clears throat> okay, what is waiting? Here we go back now. We made a circuit. <clears throat> of course, we're not finished because Jesus made another circuit. Come on down here. Glorified. In other words, the theophonic body comes in and picks up his flesh body. <laughs> now glorified. <clears throat> okay. We have a body waiting. Okay. The flesh man is going to be tested. Let's go to Hebrews, the 12th chapter, and we're going to talk about sons. Beginning verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that easily besets us, and that, that's unbelief. <clears throat> let us run with patience and race set before us. In other words, don't get, don't get in your high horse and don't get excited and don't try to, to rush. Just sit back and relax. And Brother Brown said relaxing is under the seventh seal. So we're not, we're not much under the seventh seal yet. We're under it, but it hasn't taken much effect. The, 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 the anesthetic has not yet taken effect. Isn't that awful? But by faith, I believe it. Now, we're more relaxed than we were because we're crystallized. Yeah, have you ever seen a petrified uh, crab or the little, little tiny few cellular creatures that they pick out of the, um, you know, out of the strata, the very strata there? Sure you have. You've seen them. <coughs> you can see them in, uh, in museums. They're at rest, too. They're <laughs> petrified. And we're not that, not that bad. We're, we're, we're crystallizing in our understanding <clears throat> of the fact that he is here. He's the judge. He declared sentence. He's going to get us out of here. It's all over, whether we like it or not. We got that much rest. Whether we're like the guy that's going to get his head chopped off tomorrow morning, or his neck strung up. Now, the world doesn't know that, but we know it. You bet we know the secrets of God. We're supposed to know the secrets of God. We know the secrets of God. People don't believe us, but I don't mind that. I'm happy to, you know, the, the, one of the, you know, the most wonderful things in the world is to share a secret if you're not, you know, naughty in doing it. <clears throat> so we share our secrets here from what the prophet teaches us, see? Now, now, let me read some more. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the chain, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your own minds. Now remember, this is the one he's talking about in chapter 2. And our relationship to him, where he is the, the, uh, the, the elder brother, <clears throat> we're of the same source, he and us, all from God, sanctified, in the midst of the congregation, he's singing praise. Now watch what he says about us. Now, you have not yet resisted unto blood striving against sin. He did in the Garden of Eden. He shed, in the Garden of Gethsemane, he shed drops of blood. And, you have for, and, and, and ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son. Despise not the training of the Lord, the chastening, nor faint without rebuke to him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourges every son whom he receiveth. <clears throat> now, what does he do? Does he just go bop, bop, slam, slam, kick, kick, hey, hey, like the farmer that kicked his pig every time he saw him? He said, why do you kick your pig? He said, well, he said, because he's either going into trouble or coming out of it. <laughs> do you think God kicks us like a bunch of pigs? No. He puts trials and testings and temptation, testing. The word really is not temptation as though like Adam and Eve. 
It's really testings. He puts these things in front of us. Like maybe somebody say, well, boy, if I could rob a bank, I'd get out of debt. You'd get in jail too. Well, I'd take a chance on that, but I'd rob a bank. And you, you know what? Your poverty has tried to make a way of escape when to get out is to learn what I've been trying to teach you here, a proper understanding of spirit. If you can only get it, you, you can't, brother, sister, be any more than like David said. He said, I've, I've been young, now I'm old, yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken or seed begging bread. Amen. I want you to understand God is true. We may act like a bunch of phonies. I won't deny that, but God is true. And there's always someone that will believe God. Amen. Brother Branham said, if we're not bright, there's a bride up there somewhere, but the grace of God won't stand away. So I like a man like Brother Branham who <clears throat> says those things. No. All right, let's keep reading. But, verse 8, but if you be without chastisement, tested and tried, and see how you react to conditions, whereof we're all partakers, then you're illegitimate, you're bastards and not sons. A true son of God will come to the place where he said, Lord, I'm going to trust you. I've got to do it. Now, you could die in that condition because somebody's got to take us out of this world. Daddy Bosworth prayed for the sick. And he, and you, I, I knew Daddy well. And he loved anybody that had a radical mastered operation. No eardrum. <clears throat> no bones in there. Gone. Well, he just started chuckling. Because he knew the minute he prayed, that God just looked like this because he got a new eardrum. Amen. That happened once in my ministry. I don't know how it happened. I just knew it would. You can't, you can't tell how God moves. If you're not led by God, praying for sick and all these things, brother, can be farcical. Can be, brother Branham was the only true man that ever was a word man in our midst, brother, sister. You watched him. You saw just what was exactly right. You listened, you heard what was right. Daddy Bosworth died with cancer of the prostate. <clears throat> he didn't die very, very sick, but he knew he was going. Two hours before he died, he sat up in bed, shook hands with all the saints, departed, hugged him in the spirit, saw him all mine. You, you know, to die like that, you've got to live like that. <laughs> you can't say, Lord, I'm going to suddenly live like, die like this. Hogwash, you've got to, you've got to come down here. You know, you're tested. And, and uh, you're otherwise you're a legitimate child. Furthermore, we had fathers that of our flesh that corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father's spirits and live? For verily thought a few, for, for verily for a few days they chastened us for their own pleasure. We get mad and bop our kids. God never gets mad and bops us. You know, that, let's let's realize this morning if we can, brother, sister, because a lot of us don't feel well. We get sick, and as you get older, you're going to get sicker. Let's understand this. God does not bop you. He doesn't slap anybody around. If you're too obstinate, he just cleans you up nicely and lets you die. You say, well, I think, Brother Bale, I, <clears throat> I got all these problems because I've been such a nasty person. I'm going to tell you, you're still a nasty person. <laughs> you haven't quit it. So you're sick, is that it? No. No, that's not what God's doing. Don't try to associate anything outside the word. Be sure you know the Word. Don't be guilty of trying to judge the, the Word by the Spirit. It won't work. You always judge the Spirit by the Word. Let every single thing be by the Word. Word, 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 because it's been revealed to us. <clears throat> now, that's enough of this. Let me read on here. It said, they, they did protect you, but he for our profit, that we might be partakers of his holiness. What does that mean? He that suffers in the flesh will cease from sin. To partake means... As wholeness doesn't mean you get it by suffering. It doesn't mean you're going to be a good person by suffering. It means that you learn your lessons and you walk more in his image. You're walking in the light and the blood is always cleansing you. See? Okay, let's get back to Brother Branham here now. <clears throat> you bypass the theophany, become a flesh man, be 10% in. Then if this earthly tabernacle is all, we've got one waiting. That's right. We have not yet the word, the bodies, which is the word bodies. We don't have them yet. But look, when this body receives the Spirit of God, the immortal life inside of you, it throws this body in subjection to God. Hallelujah. Now that there <clears throat> is the truth. In other words, you and I receive the strength through the revelation of the Word and the power that's in the Word to walk according to the Word. As the Bible says, if you live in the Spirit, walk in the Spirit. Well, certainly we should be able to do that. <clears throat> now, he speaks of immortality, which can only come on the other side of the resurrection. But you know what about us here that are going to meet? 
uh, the, the, the presence of God as we do. <clears throat> well, we don't go to our theophanies. No way, shape, and form. It has to come to us. In the meantime, if we die, we have a body. The, what, the spirit body, word body, the, theophonic form. <clears throat> there it is. We have it absolutely uh, knowing we're going to go there. No problem at all. Now, uh, now I was looking at this thought here. <clears throat> if you sin, let's see if we can talk a little bit about it. There always, of course, has to be a channel somewhere <clears throat> in order for a person to receive an impression, a stimuli, stimulus, in order to make a response, in order to respond to it, to have a reaction. There's got to be some type of stimulus for, for reaction and for response. <clears throat> now, here, <clears throat> you couldn't have it. <clears throat> here, you could have it, down below. So that's where the trouble comes. Now, in the soul, there lies from bypassing this and going directly down here. You come here to the book and down here to the flesh. What lies in that soul is faith or doubt. <clears throat> the power of decision to believe or not believe. And if the soul gives way to the flesh and the spirit, it will make a wrong decision, but it's in itself. I would not believe that that soul sins because the soul that sinneth, it shall die. And it wasn't that Eve disbelieved God or Adam thoroughly disbelieved God and said <clears throat> certain things that would have condemned them, blasphemed the Holy Ghost, the Word of God. But what they did, <clears throat> they listened to Satan interpret the word to them, and thereby they came into their problem. So just looking at this picture here, as uh, Brother Branham talks of it, then if you sin, and we know that Adam and Eve did sin, he didn't call a sin to begin with. He just says, don't touch this tree, have a thing to do with it. <clears throat> but he said, the day of eating of it, he said, that's the day you die. And we know that sin entered in, and it entered in by unbelief. Did not believe that there was a penalty attached to it, because Satan came in, and Brother Branham said, uh, you're the righteous, spotless bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, you didn't even do it at all. You were tricked into it. So what we're seeing here then, they were tricked. <clears throat> but the soul itself, as I understand scripture, cannot be tricked in the sense that it will ever deny the word of Almighty God. You and I all have been tricked into many, many things. But when it came down to the word, which was the word, we have not failed to receive the word of God and believe it. But when temptation of flesh come because we're flesh people, we can do fleshly things which we will look at. We won't have time this morning. We're going to look at it. In the, in the book of, Saint, of, 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 of 1 John and show you how that comes to us. <clears throat> now, in the millennium, because of glorified bodies, or if we had simply theophonic bodies, we would never sin because of circumstances. There would be nothing there to respond to that particular thing that is there. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> we understand this point then. When God let us come down here, he let us positively come in a form that could be tempted and respond. Well, that's all you can see. <clears throat> and if God allowed it, God allowed it. And, and Arrhenius was the man that said it. God being a, 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 a savior, it was necessary. He predestinated a man. Now watch, predestinate a man. In other words, take him to a place that he requires salvation. So God allowed his sons to come to a place where they would need salvation. They are separated from God. How much separation from God in this form here? Come on. Really no separation at all if you want to talk about it. It's when they get down here the separation is. This is where the trouble can be. There's no trouble up here. No way, shape, and form. And when you leave here, there's no trouble up there. 
And when you come back, there's no trouble anymore. There's only trouble in one spot here. God allowed it. <clears throat> then he paid the price of himself in his own life in the body of the Son and gave his own blood. Now that's the best I can understand and do that there because I cannot at this time find anything that Brother Branham would have said or the Word of God would have said that the soul, a part of God, would actually be sinful. No place. In fact, he himself said that when you're full of the Holy Ghost, you'll come to a time when you realize you always were saved. Amen. Well, my heavens, if you always were saved, then you never were lost. Amen. What's he talking about? He's talking about the perfection of God no matter where that goes. Yes. It's always the perfection of God because it's a part. So that's the best I can tell you there. <clears throat> There's a bit of problem, but we don't have to worry too much. How many minutes do that? 20? Well, I'm not going to go any further. I'm going to stop here <clears throat> because I think this is a good place to leave the blackboard, make a quick recap, and then go right on to where I want to take you and show you what is in this world here, what God allowed to bring in and bring a principle of temptation of sin to us. And, and, and uh, we'll see there that, <clears throat> as Brother Branham brought us, uh, and he says he brings us right down the line like this one here. See? And into a perfect glorified form. This same happens to us down here. And maybe some of you go up there. Most of us do. And then some of us just take a cut across right here and just get glorified and meet our theophanies. Because, hey, when you're glorified, it's just as good as if you're in this here. But you see, you've got to come together the whole way. That's why Brother Branham brought the message, teaching us exactly the complete plan and purposes of Almighty God. This generation under the seventh seal is the only people that has the bird's eye view of Ephesians chapter 1. Nobody else has it. Mm -mm. No, sir. Not in the day of Paul. Paul said it and couldn't preach it. Couldn't do it. People couldn't get it. <clears throat> this is the only fully mature people. That's why there's something under Melchizedek and I could have already told you what it was. It's pure and simple. The, the, the great thing that I see at this point is that Melchizedek was a priest of God unto men. That same one is down here ministering to us today. And the Lamb is still on the throne. And what's he doing? Ministering for us to God. There's an intercessor there, brother and sister. But God himself, without that one there, brother, sister, God would come down and blast creation to nothing. See what you're looking at? Under Melchizedek. Nobody would ever know this except, except a God send a prophet. And I don't know what it's going to do for us. What I do know it's going to do for us is going to increase our faith. Amen. It's going to be part of getting out of here. I love it, don't you? Amen. Come on, let's rise and be dismissed. If you love the Word of God, Heavenly Father, again, we thank you for your kindness and goodness to us at this time. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, we know that you're with us, O oh God, to lead us and guide us and direct us to all truth. And this is a part of truth. And Lord, we know that there isn't any truth but what will be manifested as such. And so, Lord, we're happy to know that there's a manifestation here in this hour and the truth of Melchizedek caught on a camera, God himself ministering to a people, and telling us exactly the destiny he cut out for us in himself and for his son, Lord. It couldn't be any better. We would never have asked for this. We wouldn't have known to ask for it. But we thank you, Lord, for bringing it to us. Now, Lord, let it congeal within our minds and block up every channel of the soul so it won't get out, but get right down into our souls and then begin to come out in, a, in, in expectant, believing faith as never before, walking in the light, having fellowship with another, the blood of Jesus Christ cleansing us. So, Father, now, we're, <clears throat> as we go into the baptismal service, we pray, Lord, that you'll bless those, that if there's more than one in this service, oh God, and us who are here, to be a part of it, to know this is a great witness unto you in this end time, that here is another one that wants to express faith in you, Lord, in this end time message, in our great God and Father. We just ask you to bless us, Lord, to this end. We'll give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Take the name of Jesus Christ.